Greens. And so my name's Rob Kerr. It's my pleasure just to, to do the introduction here. So I'll just tell you the way things are going to happen. Um, so we have uh, a lineup of speakers here. So uh, Honourable Jerry Brownlee, the Minister for Canterbury Earthquake Recovery, will speak first. Then the Mayor of Christchurch, Honourable Land Leanne Dalzell. Uh, then the Honourable Ruth Dyson, uh, the member for Banks Peninsula. And then uh, Ta Mark Solomon, the Kaifakahari of Tauranga or Naitahu. So uh, after we've done the speeches, uh, I'd like to invite you as well to, to join us to walk down to the site and, and, um, and see the site properly. Minister. Well, thank you very much, uh, Rob, for that introduction. Uh, and welcome to all of you to uh, this site where the Canterbury Earthquake Memorial is going to be constructed. I want to particularly acknowledge the Mayor, Leanne Dalzell, uh, my Ministerial Associate, the Honourable Nikki Wagner, uh, Sir Mark Solomon, Dame Margaret Baisley, uh, Waimakariri Mayor David Ayres, I think, is going to join us, as is Kelvin Coe from Selwyn, the Honourable Ruth Dyson, the Honourable Kate Wilkinson, uh, members of the emergency services and others who have come along this morning. But most importantly, I'd like to acknowledge the families of those who lost their lives on February 22nd and also those who suffered severe injuries on that day and carry a reminder of that day with them for the rest of their lives. February 22nd, 2011 was a day that brought shock, it brought sadness, it brought grief, but it also brought courage and heroism and determination. And those things have helped us, each of them, in many ways over the last three and a half years. More than just a moment to remember a place, we would like uh, this memorial to be a testament to all of those virtues, but particularly to, this, to, the, to the loss of life uh, it, it, that was experienced on that day. To make it a place where uh, we are able to remember and those who follow us remember exactly what happened and what we've had to face here. Some people say that that day defined our generation. I think it's going to define many generations of residents of this part of New Zealand for quite some time to come. The place we want to uh, see built here will be a place for us to return to, to reflect, to remember and to acknowledge. It will be a place I think that people make part of their visit to Christchurch. A couple of weeks ago uh, I reflected that the late Rick Toe when he spoke at the uh, first memorial for those who had lost their lives uh, just after the event in February 22nd, used the poetry of Te Reo Māori to remind us that we are all part of a life force, the living, the dead, the past and the future. And so I think it's very appropriate that this location is right alongside the Avon River, the Otakaro, and is part of the Otakaro River Park. A lot of effort is being made to restore that river, to work with its ecology, to enliven it again. And I think to have that flowing past a place where we remember people who were loved by so many and who are mourned by so many more is a very nice synergy that I think will serve well to make it a special place for many years to come. So today starts the first stage, the first of three stages in getting the memorial completed. And under the title, Ideas to Remember, people are being asked to submit their ideas about how we might remember. Not a single memorial, but a place, a place for people. We anticipate that there will be hundreds of ideas, and we welcome that. There will be six ideas eventually that are asked uh, for further development. And from those six, one will be chosen with the intention to use the money set aside by the government and by the Christchurch City Council to have that memorial completed for the fifth anniversary in 2016. What we want and what we need is a place to remember, to reflect, but also
to celebrate. Those who lost their lives would not want us to stand still. And so celebrating the achievements of the last few years in adversity may well become part of that memorial site. I think we need to remember the shock that that day brought, the sadness that it inflicted on those families who were, who were suffering loss, along with the grief that they had to endure, and then the injuries that so many people suffered as well. It also, though, was a day where there was a great deal of courage exhibited by many, many people. That needs to be recognised and remembered as well. And then I think there is the determination to recover, to be better, to not only rebuild our city with stronger construction, but to retain in our hearts the essence of our communities that work so well together in the aftermath of that event and continue to see shaping a way of living here in Christchurch. This is, as Rob said, a very important step on the long journey from February 22, 2011. I'm very pleased to be here today and thank you all for being here and I do hope for the families uh, this is a, an appropriate recognition of your loss. Thank you. Ena mana, ena reo, ena iwi tena koto, tena koto, tena ratato katoa. When I spoke at the memorial service for the third anniversary of the earthquake, I acknowledge that there were those who were grieving for a loved one who died on the 22nd of February 2011. There were those who were seriously injured on the day and whose lives would never be the same. There were those who were traumatised by what they saw or were called upon to do. And there were those who have experienced loss as a result of the earthquake. And in this I included people who lost their home, their neighbourhood, their business, their job. I said we'd been through a lot as a city and that there was still much healing to be done. That was why I wanted this year's commemoration to be away from the scenes of devastation that still haunt our city. I wanted us to be surrounded by beauty. And that is a phrase that is fitting for today, a place that surrounds us with beauty. When the council was asked to approve this place for our earthquake memorial, we asked two things that this be the choice of the bereaved families the first knowledge, and the first knowledge group, those who were deeply affected by the loss of a family member, a husband, a wife, a child, a parent, a brother or sister, those who were seriously injured and survivors of the major building collapses. We knew that they would know in their heart of hearts that this was the right place. And we wanted a governance group that reflected the role of the city as custodians and Naitahu as the kaitiakitanga of this place. Um, and that we were in partnership with central government whose role in this reflects the sad truth that our loss here in Christchurch has reached beyond our borders to the international community with people of 16 other nationalities having lost their lives here. We are particularly pleased that there will be an initial call for expressions of interest that will be all-embracing. The families told me that their, that their mantra was to be inclusive, and this is going to be a very inclusive process. You don't need to be a landscape architect to have your idea capture the imagination of the people who will make the shortlist that will go through for further design and the final stage. And I know that this is going to excite the energy of many of the creative people who have come to the fore as we transition to the city we will become. The Lonely Planet and the New York Times have highlighted the essence of that energy and what that brings to our city of Christchurch, Ototahi. This call for expressions of interest will again turn the international spotlight back on Christchurch. I believe this place itself will excite a lot of attention. Its natural beauty lends itself to so many possibilities. I am no designer, but I can already imagine elements defining our experience, whatever it may be, that will be both meaningful and respectful of all peoples who will seek to find solace here 
as well as a sense of hope for the future. As I said on the 22nd of February, let us claim that future, remembering our past, honouring those whose lives were lost or changed forever, respecting all who make Christchurch their home and creating for ourselves a sense of place where we all belong. This will be a place of belonging, a place of memory for those who have experienced the pain of loss and at the same time a place of inspiration and of hope. Um, can I acknowledge everyone who's gathered here for this really important and special occasion, particularly the families and friends of those who died on 22nd of February or who were injured. This is an appropriate time that we now look at a permanent memorial to mark the event that changed us all so much and changed us all forever. I want to acknowledge and thank the Government and the Christchurch City Council for their financial contribution, but more importantly for the way that both central and local government have put the families of those who were lost at the centre of the thinking about this memorial that is so important. This will be a place of peace and of calm, a place for all of us to reflect and to gather strength, not just to remember so much that we've lost, but also to remember the huge acts of courage and the small but really important acts of compassion that demonstrated our support and love for each other as communities. Everyone here should know that the thoughts and support of people in Canterbury, throughout New Zealand and indeed throughout the world, are with you. I trust that this memorial will be a place for that shared support and reflection, and that this will help people to look forward to a positive future in our renewed city. Thank you. A katoa hau ki ronga kutumi atu ki a koutou ngā manu hiri tuārangi. Ko tai mai ki konei i ronga i tēnei kaupapa whakahira hira. Ki a koutou kutu the Otakoro River has supported our people for centuries as a meeting place and as a place of gathering food or mahinga kai. Not far downstream from here was the Puari Pa. From this settlement and others, Naitahu gathered the natural resources of the waterways, the springs, the wetlands, the grasslands, and of the lowland podocarp forests that abounded along the Ōtākoro, the Ōpāwaho, the Hethkit, and at Te Ihutai, the Avon Hethkit estuary. So these rivers, these wetlands, have sustained us as families for generations. It is therefore highly appropriate that the river continues to support the people of Canterbury by providing a beautiful setting for a place of remembrance. New meaning will be invested into this site and its new role. Being close to water is good for the spirit. It helps us to remember our loved ones and reflect on our own ability to deal with trauma and come through hard times. A river can connect us to each other and strengthen our bonds. The river will continue to support us as it has always done. Nā reira, ki a rea wāna to waka whakamaui e tō kihi whakamua, hoi atu, hoi atu, he haumanu. Let us launch the waka of our recovery forward each paddle moving us closer to a reawakening. Kia ora koutou.